Aloha and welcome. My name is Taylor Norris and I am a Reiki master teacher and certified quantum soul guidance galactic astrology soul reader. And in today's reading, in today's video, we are going to explore together the astrological and galactic energies that are flowing through this beautiful Sagittarius full moon on May 23rd, 2024, and really looking into what are the opportunities for healing, for empowerment, higher guidance, and tapping into the higher frequencies of this Sagittarius full moon. So thank you so very much for being here with me in this video. Before we dive into the astrology, I would like to invite you to a class I am teaching coming up on May 25th. It is for the Jupiter in Gemini transit. This is a year-long transit, and the class is called Expanding Mental Mastery because that is part of what this Jupiter in Gemini energy is all about. The class will include galactic astrology teachings, really diving in depth into the astrology, into the galactic, and it will also include a Reiki journey that is channeled to help you connect with your own inner guidance about this transit and to tap into the higher frequencies of this for you, your insights, your guidance, your clarity. What does it mean? What are you bringing in? What do you need to let go of? And really experiencing that expanded consciousness that this transit has the opportunity to usher in. It's a year long. So from May 25th until next June, June of 2025, planet Jupiter will be in the sign of Gemini. So this isn't just like a one day thing. This is a whole year that we have and it's part of Jupiter's larger cycle. So if you're interested in this class, you can learn more on my website, taylornorrisreiki.com. It's open to all levels of Reiki and astrology experience and it's recorded in case you cannot attend live. You will be included in the sacred circle. So this is our beautiful full moon at two degrees Sagittarius, 55 minutes. It is occurring at 3.52 a.m. Hawaii time on May 23rd. So you can adjust to your time zone and see when it's occurring for you. And this is the astrology chart. So you can ignore the house placements in this chart unless you're in Hawaii. If you're somewhere else, the chart will look a little different. But we're looking at the planets, the relationships between the planets, not so much the angles or what house they are in. So in this chart, you can see what is making it a full moon is that our beautiful sun freshly entering Gemini on May 20th will be at two degrees, 55 minutes of the sign of Gemini, exactly opposite the moon at two degrees and 55 minutes of Sagittarius. And this is what creates that full moon alignment. And so what is Gemini about? What is Sagittarius about? Well, it's about truth, knowledge, wisdom, learning, teaching, communicating, higher mind wisdom with Sagittarius, more of that lower mind, mental, day-to-day -day kinds of thoughts and communications in the sign of Gemini. But this is a very curious zodiac axis. So there are many axes you can see in the chart with the signs. And that's just by taking the sign like Gemini and looking at what is the opposite. This is what we call 
an axis here. And this is an axis of truth, of curiosity, of discovery, of information, insights, downloads, high mind, low mind, really that mental body being there very much. This is also trips and travels, Gemini, shorter trips, shorter distance, local trips, social media, communication, talk, talk, talk. <laughs> Maybe not as much listen, listen, listen. And with Sagittarius, these are your longer trips. So this would be like going to a foreign country, traveling overseas, traveling abroad, connecting with an international community, and how very wonderful to be using technology to be able to do this, even if you cannot physically travel to other locales with the internet and our social media and various communication modalities, we're able to come together and connect all around the world all the time. And Sagittarius definitely loves this very much. This is also like journeying into the beyond, Reiki journeys and shamanic journeys and any other type of spiritual journeying type of technique that enables you to explore and be a discoverer and go places and expand your horizons. The sign of Sagittarius is ruled by the planet Jupiter, the expander, the expander of horizons. And so what's very notable about this particular full moon, so in any full moon in a particular sign, it's a good idea to look at the ruler of that moon. The ruler of the Sagittarius full moon is planet Jupiter. And Jupiter is still in the sign of Taurus at the time of this full moon. That very last degree of Taurus. And what's more is that it's also, it's separating from its conjunction with Uranus that was exact on April 20th, 2024. And it's also in a very tight conjunction with planet Venus. Venus, the lesser benefic, smaller planet, closer to the sun, divine feminine benefic energy. Jupiter, the great benefic, much larger planet, farther away from the sun, and more of a divine masculine type of energy if you're thinking about the god Jupiter or the god Zeus, and by all the different names, Jupiter can be translated or seen through various prisms and various lineages. So both of these benefics here conjunct our sun. So at the sun's end of the full moon, we have, you can see Mercury in Taurus, Uranus in Taurus, Jupiter in Taurus, Venus in Taurus. So there's a very strong, I'm getting like, there's a density, there's a concentration of the Taurian energy, of the Taurus energy with Mercury, our mind, our communications, our thoughts, our mental body, Uranus, the awakener, the surprise, the sudden unexpected events. And thinking about right now at the time of recording this video, we're having all of these solar flares, these geomagnetic storms, the M-class flares, the X-class flares, and we've seen all of these different ramifications of these geomagnetic storms in the Earth's weather systems. I know on the big island of Hawaii, we do not we very, very rarely have thunderstorms, and we've been having thunderstorms in the past 12 to 24 hours. A lot of the thunder, a lot of this kind of like Zeus energy, Jupiter energy, Altair energy with a Pluto conjunct Altair star. So many different earth changes happening, weather changes affecting the land, Taurus, and also affecting the human body. So continuing in the time leading up to this full moon and then during the full moon as well, continuing to practice a lot of self-care, a lot of grounding, taking it easy, resting, nourishing yourself with really good food, really good hydration, really good sleep, 
rest, relaxation, Reiki, any other kinds of ways that you practice stress reduction, practice stress stress relief, practice relaxation, guided imagery, visualizations, meditations, yin yoga, restorative yoga, walks in nature, time spent in nature, time spent in quiet, these kinds of things, very, very helpful and really tuning into the wisdom of your body here with so much of this Taurus energy. But really, it seems like leading up to the full moon on the full moon with Uranus so highlighted here and what it feels like with all these solar flares and geomagnetic storms that are occurring. It's like the physical representation and manifestation of all the light that so many of us have been saying yes to and calling down upon the earth and saying, yes, humanity is ready. Yes, I'm ready. I'm receiving the lights. I'm receiving the graces. I'm receiving the upgrades. I'm ready. I say yes. I give my permission. And it's like we are physically receiving that light and that frequency and that energy. So it's like our prayers are being answered <laughs> powerfully and physically and it's real and wow, this is just really, really extraordinary. And like I said, to take care of yourself, the land and everything else, your body in the process of integrating and accepting all of this light and all of this energy that is being received into the earth. Like we are all really in communication and in communion, humanity with the earth, humanity with the sun, humanity, earth, sun, moon, stars, all really in this feedback loop. And so I think at the time of this full moon, we may understand this more too, is what's coming through here. But there's a lot of sweetness in this too. There's a lot of blessings with the Jupiter Venus conjunction. There's newness still here. There's freshness here with Uranus. There's the element of surprise, the unexpected, all of that. And there's really a sense of new cycles of abundance coming through as Jupiter is separating from its conjunction with Uranus. Venus is also separating in its conjunction from Jupiter and with Uranus. So really, really extraordinary. And passing through, Venus will pass through the light of the sun and then journey beyond. So there is, this is like a moment of a divine feminine initiation here with Venus Kazemi going through the heart of the sun, the rays of the sun, and being able to carry forward this new cycle of this light and this awakened energy and this sense of blessings and embodiment and worth and creativity and all the various new directions she's going to go in the sign of Gemini and then moving forward beyond that as well. What's also significant here is that the sun is in a trine, a harmonious flow of energy with Pluto retrograde at two degrees of Aquarius. So this brings in more of that air energy, that mental energy, the ideas, the insights, the downloads, the empowerment too with Pluto in a harmonious flow of energy with the sun, our energy. So there can be a deepening sense of our intuition here. There can be the insights, the downloads, the clarity, a sense of like, I'm going to go for it. And also observing like how far we've come as well as it is a full moon. And typically full moons have more of a energy of completion whereas new moons are more of the the new beginning energy, but it's always kind of a mix of both. 
And it also will have to do with, well, what cycle, where was the moon when you were born? Are you someone who was born around a full moon? Are you someone who was born around a new moon? Are you like me where your moon is semi-square, your sun, and is in a closing semi-square to the sun? That's like kind of prior to a balsamic moon. So that will also color the nature of how this full moon is being experienced by you in terms of completions, new beginnings. And also another thing you can do is look at where's two degrees, 55 minutes of Sagittarius in your chart, and also where's two degrees, 55 minutes of Gemini in your chart. And these will be in two different houses, exactly opposite one another. And these will be the life areas that are having this emphasis and this focus at this time. And so you can kind of know a little bit more about what to expect and what life areas will be louder and coming into the light of awareness at this time for you. And so you can see there's an interesting geometry going in here with Pluto and the moon. The moon is sextile, harmonious flow of energy with Pluto in Aquarius. Pluto is in its long running sextile with Neptune in Pisces, Neptune in Pisces, Trine, another harmonious flow of energy to this moon that's opposite the sun. And then the sun, of course, is in that trine with Pluto and the sun is in a sextile with Neptune. So we're, we're getting like this dynamic configuration here. You can kind of see it if you tilt your head a little bit to the side <laughs> when you're looking at the chart. So looking at this opposition and you can kind of see two different triangles that are overlapping one another. There's like an emphasis of energy in definitely one half of your chart more than another. And then the energy is still going to be most emphasize really in mid degrees Pisces through the sign of Aries, Taurus, and into the the wee early degrees of Gemini here. So a lot of focus, a lot of concentration in certain areas of your life. And you can know that by looking at the house placements here. What's also interesting, Mars is separating from its conjunction with the North Node. Mars is about to conjunct with Chiron in Aries. So this is more of our divine masculine healing and empowerment. And with Mars and Aries too, there can be that energy of moving forward. And so much with this, we've had so much Uranian activation and still here now with this full moon having more of that Uranian activation. It's like this Mars and Aries is very powerful with its ability to act in soul aligned ways, in deeply healing ways, and also reminding yourself when do you need to hold back a little? When do you need to, okay, like my body is exhausted, <laughs> you know? been going hard the last couple of days. I need to do a different type of productive work. I'll give the example lately. I've been doing a lot of like physical work and like home type works, like priming walls and varnishing walls and pruning and like doing things outside in the orchard and then doing things on ladders and awkward positions and like breathing in a lot of fumes and mineral spirits. And I, I don't mean that like the spirit of the minerals. I mean, like, like a turpentine type of thing, chemicals. So understanding that my physical body, my Mars and Aries, okay, we can go and be productive in a different way and be more productive in like a mental type of way and still have an outlet for that, that Mars energy that wants to be very much on task and on purpose. But to you may find this with yourself where you're needing to do more like mentally productive tasks and then switching into like more of the physically productive task and like finding a balance for how to channel this powerful focused energy of 
Mars and Aries without exhausting yourself tremendously, given so much background energy of upgrades and flux within our bio fields and electromagnetic fields and all of this light we are receiving on the planet. So being very mindful of that as well. Here you can see the galactic charts of the Sagittarius full moon, and this adds a whole other layer to our analysis. And these charts come from galacticastrochart.com, where you can create a chart like this for yourself for free and check out your own galactic alignment. So these charts show the conjunctions between the various planets and points in the chart with various fixed stars that are calculated in this particular calculator. And you can see the same information here conveyed in a table form. And this shows not only the conjunctions, but also the oppositions. And these are very strong, potent, clear alignments of the star frequencies, the constellations that are very highlighted at the time of this Sagittarius full moon. So you can see there's quite a lot looking at just the conjunctions and oppositions. There aren't any that are to the sun and the moon as measured by this particular calculator, but you can see that nearly everything else except for Lilith has either a conjunction or opposition. So what does this mean? Our galactic family is very available. The enlightened star beings are very, very available to us. All of this solar flares and geomagnetic storming we've been receiving, this really is an activation of our DNA and more of who we truly are and where we come from and our origins and our stories and what we're capable of as human beings. We're capable of some pretty awesome things. Our clear senses, our higher senses, our intuition, our intellect, our imagination, our ability to tap into guidance and information, non-local information, our ability to work with invisible streams of energy and frequency, our abilities to manifest. Taurus is very interested <laughs> in this manifestation and making physical all of these different higher frequencies that are coming through. That is part of this storyline that's coming through here. We have the nodes with Andromeda Alpharats and Algarab star in Corvus. So I talked about this a little bit last time. Alpharats has been very strong with the nodes and with Chiron this year. That's a star that is about freedom, that is about the divine feminine. It's connected to Andromeda constellation, but also Pegasus constellation. It's kind of like a part of both, but really freedom and speed and forward movement. And at the time of this full moon, all the planets except for Pluto are still moving forward. So there is a sense of that forward thrust energy. Algarab star in Corvus. Corvus is the raven that is on the serpent of Hydra. And so this is a star of like mediumship and mystical abilities and intuition and psychic abilities and connecting with the spirit world and all of these different abilities we have as human beings to connect with invisible realms and frequencies and to be in touch with spirit, to be in touch with soul. And this can be very deeply healing of our shadow self energies as well here and in touch with the whispers from those beyond the veil and helping even those beyond the veil go to the light if they are needing to go to the light. So there is a sense of that communion here with beings on the other side and beings beyond the veil. This would be a great time to take classes in mediumship. <laughs> And while um, the nodes are making alignments with Corvus or to take classes in improving your psychic abilities, your intuition, 
You may also spontaneously notice some of these abilities highlighting and you may choose to develop skill in those areas or not. I know for me, it was really helpful to start developing skill in these areas so they weren't just like coming up and I would have to deal with them and maybe I wouldn't be so skillful in how I dealt with them. When I actually started taking trainings, I then learned how to, oh, I, I can turn that off. I can dial that down. I don't have to do that. Oh, that's really nice. I can do that in the context of a Reiki session for somebody else when they make an appointment, but it doesn't have to come into my life when I don't want it to, for example. So that was really, really useful. And if that's feeling resonant with you to develop your intuition in any way you feel called, we will have some time when the south node will continue to be conjunct this star. You can see the conjunction is still pretty tight at 0.55 degrees or mercury opposite a crux star this is the star of our religious trauma and our religious healing too so letting go of religious trauma any of that conditioning that's been lodged within the mental body of being unworthy being a sinner needing to sacrifice oneself needing to be a martyr and so on this is also a star that's about physical manifestation within the material world so that could be very highlighted that could be on your mind and wanting to make a difference in a way that is physical but is also linked very deeply to your soul and your spirit and your spiritual connection as well but really having that opportunity to let go of any kind of martyrdom and this is something I've seen a lot in Reiki sessions and I've had to heal a lot myself and I actually wrote an article about releasing the martyr archetype and it turns out I wrote that article and I saw all of that highlighting before I ever learned that I actually have very strong alignment with a crook star. It's aligned in my Pluto. <laughs> so I was like, wow, that really was a part of my soul's experience to learn that we don't need to sacrifice. We don't need to be martyrs in this lifetime. We can be of service and of benefit in this lifetime in ways that are very nourishing and nurturing and supportive of self as well as others and benefiting others and being of service. So at this time also Mars is conjunct Tau Ceti star and Cetus constellation and I was talking about this quite a lot earlier this year as well when we had North Node and Chiron conjunct this particular star Tau Ceti. So this can also be a reactivation of that April 8th eclipse, solar eclipse, total solar eclipse, whatever happened back then, early April for you. And also thinking back even this February, some of the healing that would have been going on in your life at the time of the North Node and Chiron conjunct this particular stars, Mars here is coming through and like delivering more of that life force and more of that healing of any kind of deeply held, deeply embedded subconscious material that may need to be healed at this time. And Tau Ceti, this is a star in the belly of the whale, the sea monster Cetus, who was sent to destroy Andromeda, who was chained to a rock. And she found herself there because her parents, Queen Cassiopeia and King Cepheus, had inadvertently angered the gods when Cassiopeia was boasting either of her own beauty or of her beautiful daughter Andromeda's beauty. And the gods were angry about this, particularly Venus, Aphrodite, goddess of beauty so king and queen chained their daughter the princess to the rock in order to appease the gods who sent cetus to destroy andromeda but andromeda of course was saved by perseus and they were married and went off to live happily ever after or however the story may really have gone here 
But what I've seen with Cetus star system is that it is quite a magical star system. There's a lot of love there. There's a lot of light there. There's a lot of depth. There's a lot of like this dream work. There's a lot of knowledge and mastery within the collective unconscious, within the deeps, the depths of the waters, the emotions, the mysteries, the mysticism, the whales, the knowingness of group consciousness. And so Mars can be penetrating into some of that. Both Venus and Jupiter here at the very final degree of Taurus are conjunct the stars of the Pleiades. So the Pleiades is a star cluster in the constellation of Taurus. So it's making contact with all of the various stars there, Electra, Maya, Alcyone, Tegeta, and the others that are a part of that cluster. This is a very strong <laughs> infusion of the Pleiadian energy, which I'll be talking more about in my Jupiter and Gemini class because as Jupiter enters the sign of Gemini, this Pleiadian energy frequency surge continues very, very much so. The Pleiadians are very interested in contact with the Earth between the galactic and the ETs and the star beings with the Earth and the humans and understanding our star lineage and our star connections and the healing and the partnerships and the communication and the ability for humans to remember. I think this is really about helping us remember who we are and how we're connected and to listen to the wisdom of our hearts and our minds and our bodies and that the galactic and the universe is truly contained and coded within our bodies and is being awakened now with these powerful solar flares and electromagnetic storms and everything that's taking place here that is in the service of us remembering our connection to the rest of the solar system and the solar system's connection to the rest of the stars in the universe and our connection to the earth as well as a star being herself as a planetary body a planetary consciousness and really understanding our interconnectivity and acting from that place of wholeness and unity and oneness and sweetness and benevolence and kindness. So this would be an easy time for galactic contact and frequency upgrades and really communing with Pleiadian soul families. So if that is coming in for you, know that that is divinely guided, divinely ordered. It may occur in the dream time as well, particularly with Mars conjunct Tau Ceti and Cetus. Like I said, that star in that constellation is very connected to the dream time. So your galactic contact experiences may be occurring in the dream time where certain messages and codings are unleashed and revealed within you during that time. And then just also expanding your idea of what galactic contact is in understanding your soul and your spirit and your multidimensional self, that that is a form of galactic contact that doesn't necessarily mean like you're meeting a star being outside of you. It can be that, but it can also be a very inward experience of experiencing your own star connections alive within you and your own memories of past lives and future lives and simultaneous lives and those kinds of things too that it's really big and expanded jupiter here how this can manifest saturn still conjunct after our star and eridanus and really interesting that we have seen flooding eridanus is the river of life the river of peace but it can also be connected to crises and pole reversals and like ice ages and 
these kinds of things. So all the different weather events and storms can definitely be a manifestation, one of the more difficult expressions of this Atronar star that has the potential to be like really, really peaceful and embodying whole new levels of world peace and inner peace and cosmic peace. But it also can operate in in this like the earth changes that occur and the power of mother nature and the forces and the beings and the collectives that are orchestrating certain changes that's all part of a higher divine order but can be really hard and traumatizing when it's your home or it's land that you care about or it's your people or your country and and so on and your planet right it's happening here on earth this is part of that story and and it also can be a even deeper embodiment of even deeper levels of peace. And that is really how I have been choosing to express it and seeing it be expressed in all the Reiki sessions I get to do for other people. And then my own choice to literally be in the Reiki energy 24 7 all the time and to keep learning and keep deepening and keep healing and keep experiencing because there's infinite depth with the reiki energy and the lineage i'm a part of has specifically called in and received this world peace energy and the spiritual locations we work with include the river of life and the river of peace. So that's part of why I love this star so much is that I see it's like the star version of this spiritual location within the Reiki spiritual realms that I love so much. Uranus opposite Hadar star, Centaurus constellation. This is like the Chiron constellation. So there's healing here. There's that heaven on earth frequency here. And there, there's like, okay, all of this earth changes and solar storming and everything is in service of these heaven on earth frequencies being made manifest and anything that needs to be cleared out that is not a vibrational match is being cleared out and so to let that go and know that it's in the service of a, a greater consciousness that is needing to connect physically with the earth that humanity is arising into this experience more and more of heaven on earth of healing and wellness and wholeness and peace and thriving and harmony with each other with the earth with nature and with all that is neptune with skiat and pegasus opposite the super galactic center our ancestral healing continues our cleansing purging continues is saturn Uran uranus and neptune are all kind of part of the same story here of the various different changes that are happening and also the continual letting go with neptune at that very final degree of pisces so this can be grief this can be emotional overwhelm this can be like death even right letting go of others and loved ones and yeah even making me think of this algorab like you know releasing beyond the veil into the other realms the passages the transitions of life and the impermanence that is a part of the earth human experience so if there is quite a lot of letting go that is happening know that that is part of the neptune at the final degree of pisces process that will be basically working with us for the next year because neptune will enter the sign of aries next year but then it retrogrades back into pisces and then goes direct and re-enters aries so there will be kind of a continued letting go like on and off 
for the next year or so, and depending on your individual chart, will kind of color and show more about like what that looks like specifically for you if you have like planets, points, placements at this this latter degree of Pisces and really like latter degrees of the mutable signs so Sagittarius, Gemini, Virgo. This could be particularly highlighted for you. Pluto retrograde conjunct Altair star and Aquilo makes me think of the thunderstorms here. That's like the first thing I think of now with the thunder is Altair, the eagle, and all of these various heavenly weather events like we are receiving them again it's like the saturn uranus neptune pluto story is really really unifying showing the changes upon the earth venus jupiter at the last degrees of taurus here these changes are for our highest good and they're physical and they're unexpected and they're unpredictable but ultimately they are for our evolution, Pluto and Aquarius, to bring us more into a communal way of living, supporting one another, understanding frequency, understanding energy, and understanding the power of our intentions and our ability to work with invisible energy as well, that many of us are remembering this and it's showing. <laughs> it's really showing. I think moving forward, more and more people are going to be open to things like Reiki and energy healing and astrology and, and remembering that they're wizards <laughs> and witches. And you can be a good witch and a good wizard and be a light bearer and a light bringer and use these things for wellness and well-being and thriving and harmony and peace and really not just to serve the self but really not the love of power but rather the power of love using the invisible energy working with the higher frequencies working with enlightened energies that are in resonance with the power of love for the highest good of all so this is really looking like a wizard initiation here. <laughs> Galactic wizard. <laughs> so yeah, this is the Galactic Heritage card that I pulled. I asked for what is the highest guidance for everybody who will be watching this Sagittarius full moon video. And this is from the Galactic Heritage cards by... Lisa Royal Holt, and you can see this is number 52, Progressive Desires, Earth, Present Timeline. And I'm going to read to you the interpretation from this card because I think it's really, really perfect and is speaking to Mercury, Uranus, conjunct Jupiter and Venus, conjunct the sun opposite the moon, all in the signs of Taurus with that Gemini sun, of course, opposite the moon in Sagittarius. Sagittarius moon ruled by planet Jupiter at that final degree of Taurus. It really is expressing the energy that can be like, I want change, change, change now, 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 progressive desires. That can be kind of a shadow aspect of this moon. Like, I want to be the wizard now, right? <laughs> So here's the interpretation. During a time of transformation, it is common to feel a great excitement and a desire to make sweeping change very quickly. However, because there are many people who fear change, it is prudent to make change that is slow and steady instead of rushing things. In this way, those who cling to the old will not get spooked and obstruct the natural process of transformation. Take an honest look at your life and see where you are either moving too fast or resisting change. Seek the middle road. As you do this, you assist the earth to transform itself with grace and ease as well. This card is energetically the opposite of the last card, number 51, and that is called conservative attachment. 
and represents the polarized energy playing out on Earth in present day. Card 51 talks about those conservative attachments that stop healthy change. This card can refer to the desire for change that compels action prematurely. Change is a constant and we can never escape it, but we have to be wise when we implement it. If this card came up in your reading, it may be asking you to look at the impulsive actions you have taken based on premature desires for change. Or conversely, it may be asking you to take a chance with change and growth, even when you feel frightened. You will have to look at the surrounding cards in your life circumstance in order to gain a clearer understanding of the message this card is trying to give you. Given the energy on earth now, during this transformational time, change will happen rapidly and profoundly, no matter how afraid we are. This is the nature of the energy at this time. It would be wise to begin to feel comfortable with the unknown and with new directions that may arise so that when growth becomes necessary for you, you can navigate it with grace and ease. Isn't that just Perfect. I know I can really resonate. And this also reminds me of the Mars and Aries, kind of in that sandwich between the North Node and Aries and Chiron and Aries. So moderating that Mars, moderating that action where there is forward movement and momentum, knowing when to charge ahead, when to pull back. And then also realizing if you are feeling a bit stuck in the resistance, the slowness, the density of Taurus, where to spark that fire and be moving forward into action. And again, those who are taking action to moderate that action and not be rushing forward too fast here. It really is this delicate balance and this dance and it's one that we're learning and we're mastering so it's okay to make mistakes here too so be really gentle with yourself in that process as well in that learning process so i want to thank you so much for being here if you want to connect more please visit my website, taylornorrisreiki.com. You can learn more about the upcoming Galactic Astrology and Reiki class on Jupiter and Gemini on May 25th, as well as all the Reiki sessions, Reiki certification trainings I teach, the astrology readings I give. There's a variety of different types of readings I love and have the honor and privilege to give to others and also my free monthly new moon distant reiki shares you can learn all about that on my website taylornorrisreiki.com and learn about what's coming next so thank you so much for being here much love to you have a beautiful full moon in sagittarius aho amen namaste and so it is mahalo